You have a good weekend. Everybody get on to LinkedIn and to uh, e-recruiting and, and spend some valuable time with all of that great information that you got from the best lecture of your experience at BYU so far. Good. Um, did anybody uh, create a LinkedIn profile? Anybody that wasn't already on LinkedIn? Did anybody get on to e-recruiting after he, I talked to you? Okay, so one of your homework assignments today is, is going to be to upload a resume into e-recruiting. You're gonna perfect your resume, make it look really good. If you want somebody to critique it, then you can bring it into to us and have us look at it. And by the way, prior to all of the career fairs, we always have walk-in hours and so you can come in we usually um, at least one day but usually two days um, we'll have walk-in hours that we'll advertise and and you can just uh, come in and get your resume critiqued without an appointment if you want an appointment ever then our our numbers on the bottom of this uh, handout here and so I'll pass these around and and you can always make an appointment to have somebody critique your resume <clears throat> so I'm glad you're doing a resume um, because uh, you want to you want to be able to represent your yourself well in whatever way that the employer is is uh, looking for, and a lot of times all you have is that piece of paper. They're collecting a bunch of resumes, and so that can be tough to do. So you want your resume to look good. How many of you have a resume that you feel confident in that you really like? Good. That's more than that's more than is typical. Um, usually most people are not very confident in, your re in their resume. Usually people feel like it's something that they need to put a lot more time into and a lot of work. The resume is a work in progress. It's something that you're going to be constantly working on and updating and fixing and making look better. But hopefully after today's um, um, presentation, you'll feel a little more equipped and, and confident in, in your resume building skills. None of this is rocket science. The most important thing is to get in the head of the employer. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to skip some of this first stuff that I talk about sometimes because we talked about it a little bit more, but I talked about how it can be challenging. Even though you're in a great major and there's some great opportunities, it can be challenging to get that first job. Um, but I do want to emphasize, re-emphasize the importance and the value of having somebody critique your resume every time you update it. So every time you update it, there's a, there's a chance that you have a typo or there's a chance that you did something that, um, that you're not catching that somebody else will catch. So whether it's a roommate or a professor or somebody in our office, have somebody look at it every time. These are actual blunders that we found on resumes. Received a plague for salesperson of the year. <laughs> Reason for leaving last job, maturity leave. I'm a perfectionist and rarely, if, if ever, forget details. <laughs> and my favorite, instrumental in ruining entire operation for a Midwest <laughs> chain store. <laughs> so instead of running, spell check is not going to catch that. So make sure that you have somebody else read through it. We are the worst critiquers of our own sentences because you know what that sentence says and so you don't read it closely, right? Because you wrote it. And so you have to have other eyes look on it, not just your own. So make sure that you have somebody else look at it or else you're not going to pick it up. Okay. Um, there's thousands of experts out there willing to give you lots of information on um, resumes and a lot of times it's conflicting. Um, even here on BYU, I talk to a lot of people that um, talk about resumes and, and a lot of times we have a hard time getting everybody on the same page. Um, even within our own office, sometimes it's good to see more than one person in our office because you'll get different opinions and that's good, that's healthy. Um, but uh, <clears throat> because everybody's heard something different, right? Everybody's, I've talked to ExxonMobil and they've said this, this is what we like. And then somebody else has talked to Union Pacific and they've said we like this. And so everybody's you know, got a different opinion and sometimes they just get really sold on those opinions and it might be true for ExxonMobil and not true for, for Union Pacific. And so um, 
it is a vital document, but it's really important to remember before before I go too far and start to talk too much about detailed stuff in resumes, it's really important to remember that the answer to most resume questions that you have is usually this. It depends. So what does it depend on? What kinds of things might it depend on? Yeah, who you're implying to. That's the number one thing. You've got to get in the head of the employer, the person that's going to be looking at the resume. And not even just the big company. Is this you know, for just a recruiter at the fair, or is this for a specific department and a hiring manager, you know, and, and addressing what you think they're going to be looking for that's going to give you an advantage. So just like in writing a paper, um, you've all taken English classes, and I'm sure that your professors have told you that pre-writing you know, emphasized the importance of spending a lot of time in pre-writing, not just jumping right to writing. With resumes, people usually put a resume together right when somebody asks for it. And so they jump right to writing. And so it's really important that during this semester, during this time, that you do a lot of pre-writing, that you're making a list of all of your skills, that you're getting into the head of the employers that you might be applying with, and you're thinking about what they might be looking for. And, and one of those pieces, is, uh, is just that, um, knowing the industry, having a broad knowledge of, of who you're applying with. I like this picture because a lot of times hiring managers, their job is not to hire people. That's just kind of a side note. Their job is to be a manager of an engineering department or something, right? Um, and they're right there in the lab. They're right there working hard. And, and oh, I got to find time to review these resumes, and and so a lot of times they're they're feeling like this when they have to hire somebody, just feeling really busy. So when you look at this um, at this picture and you think about an employer that has to take time to hire somebody, what does that mean for your resume? Yeah, they're not going to spend, especially if they, for a lot of these jobs you're going to be applying for, especially if you're going to Indeed.com, which is a big, huge, national, even worldwide job board. You know, if you're applying for those jobs, they're going to get hundreds of applicants. And so if they have 100 resumes, how many minutes or seconds do you think they'll spend on each one of them the first go around? Yeah, five to six seconds is what they're telling us. They've done studies on this, actually. And, and they're saying five to six seconds the first go around to be able to make the first cut. So what does that make you want to do with your resume to be able to make that first cut? Somehow you got to make something stand out on your resume. Make your resume stand out and something catch their attention. Very good. That's one thing. What else? How long do you think your resume should be? Yeah, you want it to. You want to cut out all of the fluff. Give them a good, nice-looking one-page professional document. Good, very good. Okay, so I'm going to put you in the shoes of this employer. Um, you think about somebody that you want to apply with. And I'm going to put you in the shoes of the employer. And I'm going to show you a bunch of actual resumes from BYU students that have given us permission to use their resumes. And you're going to look through these resumes. And I want you to think about which ones you would come back to. And I'm only going to spend three seconds, three or four seconds on each one. We're going to go through them really fast. And so I want you to notice which ones catch your attention, which ones you like, what you don't like. And then we'll have a little discussion about it. And if would you mind hitting the, at least the front light so that we can see these a little better? Because the writing's really small, and I apologize for it. But don't, you're not going to have time to read the whole thing anyway. You're going to have to, we're, we're looking at format. We're looking at what catches your attention. So about three seconds on each of these. Feel free to make notes, too, of things that you notice.
Okay, before you get into details, how do you feel? You're the employer. You can put that light back on now. Overwhelmed. I heard somebody like yawn halfway through. <clears throat> yeah, my, my first thought is if, if the resume isn't easy to read within the first few seconds, then this person is not. I, I think a good time intelligence and capability is to be able to express something clearly. And maybe I'm not doing that right now, I don't know. But uh, I, there was a lot of resumes that were like hard to read, so my first thought was I don't want to take my time to they are absolutely going to make a judge of you based on how well you organize your content. Very good, yeah. Uh, like, do they have any formatting? Just like, well, I, I, there's nothing that draws my attention to them at all. So, like, a few words. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they're going to get bored halfway through and <laughs> quit reading and just look for something to catch their attention, yeah. I kind of miss like, the bold section and, like, how big they were. And so, like, I'll tell them, like, there's a lot of, like, they had work experience and I noticed that there's a lot of space there. I was like, oh, they've got a lot of experience. And then I saw some others that had, like, a huge, like, high school activity. And it was a really huge section of, like, high school, find you now, not really something Great comment. Good. Yeah, very good. Yeah. What other things? What things were, were there? Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say the amount of writing on the resume. Like, if I was looking at all those resumes, there was just a ton of writing on one. Yeah. So I think the amount of white space you have, that helps. Yeah, really good. Be thinking about these comments that you guys are making and then think about your own resume. Look at your own resume and ask yourself how you're doing with these things. Um, but did you see any that had too much white space? Um, yeah, there was, there was one that was almost like a memo. They had all their information on the left and then the bottom there was a big old white corner in the top right. It just gets really so it's a balance. You want to make them feel like you had to pull stuff out. You've got so much good stuff that you, you know, in order to fill the page you had to leave some stuff off, but you don't want it also jam-packed and just really wordy. Good. Yeah, and bolding things that you want to catch their attention. A couple of the resumes were like, I guess it was just a format, like they were even smaller than single space, like it was all just jam-packed there and it was looked like, looked like one block. Okay, so the way that you use your spacing and your white space is really critical. And you don't, and there's some strategy to that because if you add too much space between each line, then you lose, you know, trying to keep it onto one page, sometimes that's tough. But if you use your tabs and your margins and bullet points to draw into each, you know, bullet point drawing you into each statement, then you can kill, still keep those spaces close together, but the, but the lines are a little more separated and noticeable because there's bullet points drawing you into them. So that's a really great comment. And some of the people they use, like, like a background for their formatting, and there's, there's like, I paid more attention to the background. Oh, this is different, rather than what was actually being said. Yeah, so I want to talk about that for just a minute because um, some people want to make theirs stand out and they go too far. Um, so, so this one right here, and then, did we pass it already, the art one? Oh, and this one right here. Now these two, th both of these looked pretty cool on paper they, because they were in color and they looked a little bit better, but they, it was still way too distracting. It was, it, it took away from getting into the, to the context, especially um, in a technical area Keep it conservative and professional. Err on the conservative side. Don't err on the artsy, creative side. Um, you can you can do just little things to make your stand out as far as formatting, but but err on being conservative. Um, and then also, I wanted to um, talk about the color. Um, if you're submitting a resume electronically, it might look really good in color, but if they're going to be printing it off and giving it to hiring managers or whatever, you know. You want to you wanna just um, maybe have a, a version in black and white 
to make sure that it looks as good as you think that it does. A lot of people will use a blue or an orange or something like that and then when they print it off it's a light gray and it and and instead of having something really catch their attention because it's in color it's faded and it doesn't jump out so so having a black and white version when you're submitting electronically is really good. Good comments. Anything else on any of these that you liked or didn't like or, or would come back to? Okay, well, let's go through a couple of these um, points that you've talked about and maybe just a few others. So, um, oh, and before we do, okay, so um, <clears throat> I don't want to spend too much time with this, but um, this maybe summarizes some of the points that you made. This is an education resume, and um, and so for education, they want them to know, first of all, what they've studied, and I think it's really similar in chemical engineering. I think right off the bat, your biggest credential is probably that you're studying chemical engineering. You're going to have a degree in chemical engineering. Um, how many of you are going to be applying for internships still? Okay. And how many of you are going to be applying for full-time jobs with your next application? Okay. So for internships, they want to know that you're studying chemical engineering and they want to know when you're going to graduate. So instead of putting up here your, um, how long you've been in school, a lot of times people will put, I've been in school from 2003 to 2013 and, and I mean, they don't need to know that you've been in school for 10 years and that you took time off and everything else. They just want to know when you're graduating. So just put your graduation date. Then they know how far along you are. And they, for full-time hires as well, let them know, make it really clear, this is when I'm going to graduate. Okay? Um, and then underneath your education, you can, you can put some bullet points, some things that stand out. Put um, your GPA if it's a, if it's a decent GPA. Yeah, it really depends on the, um, on the employer. A lot of employers um, in technical areas are not necessarily looking for that perfect GPA. Um, Ford Motor Company, for example, we ask employers for feedback when they come and interview people in our office, and Ford Motor Company was interviewing not too long ago, and we asked them for feedback. How are our students doing? What, what uh, could we be teaching them? And they said, well, when we were going through resumes, we had a whole bunch of resumes, and so the very first cut that we made was on GPA, and our cutoff was 3.0. And if they didn't put their GPA on, we assumed that it was low, and so they didn't make the first GPA cut. And so um, we hear that from a lot of employers. The most common cutoffs that I hear from employers are 3.0, 3.2, and 3.4. And then it's less frequent that it's a 3.5 or higher consulting firms, they're going to be really high. There's going to be, there's going to be a few employers that really want that academic, you know, just perfectionist kind of a person, but most don't want that. Most, most are going to want somebody that's done well in school, and then let's look at their resume and see what experience they have. So don't feel bad if your GPA is a 3.4. In most cases, you're going to make the cut. So. Um, and then, and then maybe highlight a few other things. This person didn't have anything else to say under education, but if you got a scholarship or if you got something that just makes you look sharp, that gives them an idea that they're dealing with a sharp candidate, go ahead and put a bullet point. Received academic scholarship, you know, whatever, and you might describe that scholarship a little bit if, if it makes sense to describe why you got it. And then, instead of teaching experience up here, what this person did that I really like is they divided, she divided her experience into two categories. She's got relevant experience and then other experience. How many of you have work experience that's not relevant to the kind of job that you're going to be applying for? Almost everybody. <laughs> okay, so this is a really great strategy. Um, if you're working right now in fast food or something because you just have to while you're going to school, then that's fantastic. But you could put it down here. Now you want to stay in reverse chronological order within categories. So, um, so you want to put your most recent first within categories. So you can put engineering experience or relevant experience or whatever you want to call it. Um, up there for that first category and then put it in reverse chronological order 
And then here you can put other work and volunteer experience, or you can call it whatever you want, and then put this in reverse chronological order in this category. Really good question. Um, so the comment about high school um, uh, information was a really good comment. Um, only put high school stuff on there if you have something really strong that they're going to be interested in. I mean, if you were really heavily involved in relevant stuff back in high school, let them know that. That's, that's going to that's gonna show that for a long time you've been headed this direction. But there's no reason to put that you graduated from Olympus High School with a 3.9 GPA. You know, if you're a junior at BYU, they, they know that you were a good high school student. So, so don't put stuff that's not really going to give you an edge or help you. Only put stuff that's way back in, in high school if, if it was relevant to what they're looking for. If it shows leadership, if you were student body president, then I would list that. If you um, headed up a an engineering club or something like that in high school, then I would list that. Um, and if you had a, a job that was relevant even in high school, then I would list it. But I wouldn't list your newspaper job. I wouldn't list your babysitting job. Another thing that comes up frequently, I think, is uh, things like Eagle Scout Award. Mm -hmm. And I've heard from people around here that you shouldn't put that on your resume because uh, maybe in the Elliott's culture that's pretty common. But I was working in Louisiana this last summer. And that was one of the things my boss specifically mentioned. He liked about one of the there was an Eagle Scout Award on there. And he, he thought that was pretty cool. So I think maybe outside of LDS circles, saying that you're an Eagle Scout or maybe some admission, things like that carry a lot more weight than you maybe we think they do. I absolutely agree. Yep, I hear it enough from employers that I absolutely agree. But the answer really is it depends, because it might not with some. But it, I hear it enough that I still advise students to put Eagle Scout and the mission on the resume. In fact, um, the mission for the career fair coming, the career fairs coming up, um, if you served a mission, you should put it on your resume, um, especially if they're coming to BYU because they know, I mean, a lot of times they're looking for a return missionary. And so one of the comments that we get sometimes is, why do your students not put their mission on their resume? We're specifically looking for somebody that has that experience. That's why we come to BYU. We want somebody that's been out and has had that. And so, um, and so don't, don't hide it in most cases. The Eagle Scout, I've had so many people that say, man, I've got five great candidates and this one's an Eagle Scout. So I'm gonna go with the Eagle Scout. <laughs> You know, it's, it's not going to be the make it or break it usually, but I hear it enough that they, they just like that. Somebody that has been involved in leadership, that's been, in, that, you know, that's been a go-getter their whole life since they were a kid, they like that. So that's a good comment, good question. Um, and then, so, so you can do this strategy. You can divide it into sections, relevant and then additional work and volunteer experience. And then there's usually a miscellaneous category at the bottom, and it's just, it can be called whatever you want. It can be called honors and professional affiliations. It can be called skills and extracurricular achievements. It can be called whatever. For me, at the bottom of my um, resume, I have something that says um, accomplishments or something like that. I can't even remember what it's called. But underneath that, I have competed in eight merit, eight, nine? nine marathons including Boston in 2002 you know just one bullet point that's all it says every time I've ever interviewed for a job which has been a long time because I've been here for five years but every time I've enter ever interviewed for a job people always ask me about my marathon running and I'm not applying for a job that has anything to do with it but if you have something like that that's gonna catch their attention that's gonna say oh I mean what does marathon running say about a person why would they ask me about it Hard work, dedicated towards a goal. goal. Yeah, those kinds of things, you know, it still speaks. And so you might have something like that about you that, you know, so think really hard. That's the pre-writing part. What do I have, even if I don't have a lot of chemical engineering experience, what do I have that might transfer over into the workplace? And you might add that in this miscellaneous category down here and decide what to call it based on what you've got. So I had one student that uh, was a weightlifter, and he had been in weightlifting competitions, and he had also climbed like 
Mount Kilimanjaro or something like that and done some pretty <laughs> cool stuff. And, he, and so he wanted to list that stuff in his, in his uh, miscellaneous section down here at the bottom. And when we were trying to, to decide what to call it, he decided to call it um, character building experiences, I think is what he put. Because then, as they were reading those things, they were reading them in that mindset, thinking about, oh, I can see how that builds character. I can see how, you know? And, and it wasn't just random facts or random you know, things. It was a little more tied to something that they might be interested in. So think about your resume and, and decide. Um, this is not, there's no one way to do this, but that's kind of an example of how one person applying for a teaching job did theirs. Okay, um, and you need to know yourself. Um, I, oh, I'm using the wrong keyboard. <laughs> I've got to put this away. I couldn't figure out why this keyboard wasn't working for me. Um, I really like this video because you're all familiar with this um, this really good nanny. Whoops, sorry. But let's see if she makes herself look as good as, as we think that she is. Do you want to hit that light back there? Oh, it's not there. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I I don't know why it's not showing. So there we go. See what you think about this person if she was applying for a nanny job. How does that apply to resumes? Was she a good nanny? How many of you have seen Mary Poppins? Was she a good nanny? <laughs> She's pretty darn good. Or do you think there's ever really great candidates who don't get the job, who don't even get an interview because of their resume? Yes, absolutely. Um, so what are, some, what are some scary things that you want to make sure to avoid on your resume? Typos, I'm telling you, that's one of those things that makes a great candidate look like Scary Mary. It makes them afraid. They're like, oh, if they're going to miss this, what are they going to do when I give them a document or when they have an assignment, you know, a project to work on? I mean, it's scary to them. Yeah, very good. That is the number one scary thing. I'm glad you said that. A lot of the other things that you already brought up are, are you know, can be scary, but don't make yourself you know, don't scare somebody off when you're trying to advertise yourself. So what's the purpose of the resume? Get an interview. You got it, to get an interview. And the reason why I bring that up is because it's not to get the job. They're not going to hire you because they saw this piece of paper. It's just a piece of paper. They would never hire somebody off of a piece of paper, almost never. Um, it's like an advertisement for a car. When you're selling a car, you can't put everything in that advertisement. You've got to give them just enough to have them come in and what? Test drive the car, right? Nobody's going to buy the car because they saw a picture of it, and especially if it's a used car, you know. They, 
they want to come in and they want to see if it's as good as it really looks on paper. And so that's, that's what your um, resume is. Um, with those car advertisements, those guys that are passionate about those cars, they have a tough time leaving out detail. They want to tell them all about this engine. They want to tell them all about, you know, everything about that car. And sometimes students have that same thing, you know, they have a tough time leaving something out from high school or leaving something out, you know, that, you know, is just going to make that page look too cluttery. And so ask yourself, what's the very, what are the very most relevant things? What do I need to show them that's going to get me that interview? And, and just put the most relevant stuff on. And then you can give them the rest in the interview. That's where you get the job. So give them some teasers. It's an advertisement. Give them some questions. Have them want to ask you about your experience. So in summary, I want to give you some, some points of things that you've already talked about, but let's go through them, and I'm going to go through them fast, but if you want to ask questions about any of them, then let's do it. So number one, you want it to be easy to read. You want it to be consistent. What do we mean by consistent? Yeah, yeah. So make it, and it ties into easy to read. My preference is to bold all of my, to list my um, degree first in bold, and then underneath it to list where I got that degree, Brigham Young University in italics, and then to list my job titles in bold, and then where I worked in italics, and just make it really easy for them to see all my job titles in bold, all my locations in italics, and then to put all of my dates over on the right. Um, some people will, will, you know, have a hard time organizing their data and they'll have, they'll have dates over on the left and then they'll have them on the right. Be consistent, make it just real easy to scan. Don't use personal pronouns. Some of you guys that are really good at, with English have a really hard time not having a complete sentence on your resume. You can break all the English rules on your resume except for spelling just about. Um, you can have uh, incomplete sentences on your resume. Um, so start off with a strong action verb, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Relate your experience to their need. So if you, um, if you served ice cream at the creamery on 9th, um, don't just tell them that you served ice cream on the creamery on 9th. So I want to do a little activity with you on this one, just really quickly. So I, got a res I saw a resume once that said, one of the bullet points underneath their work experience was, I served ice cream um, now let me tell you a little bit more about this student this student was really um, good at serving ice cream <laughs> this student and 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 how, how do we know the student was good because this student um, uh, noticed some inefficiencies at the creamery on 9th noticed that as they were scooping the ice cream, they were taking too much time trying to get the ice cream off the spoon and into the cone because it was sticking to the scoop. And so the student suggested that they put a bucket of water next to the ice cream thing and that they just dip the scoop into the, ice, into the water, scoop, dip, scoop, dip, and then the ice cream would just fall right off the scoop. And, and so and so they actually calculated the waiting time for customers and she increased it by, or decreased waiting time by at least 50% by just that simple implementation. So we know that she was good, decreased waiting time by 50%. One other thing this student did was um, she noticed that they were so focused on the line that they weren't thinking about making money. And she, so she mentioned to her boss, you know what? We don't ever, and she had learned this from another job probably, we don't ever try to upsell our customers. We don't ever say, would you like a second scoop, or would you like a topping, or would you like? And so they actually tracked money, and they just, they just asked each, each time anybody came through to say, would you like a second scoop, or would you like a topping? Just to ask one, one question, one upsell question. And um, they tracked, and they found out that they increased their sales on ice cream by about 25%. So you don't see that in I served ice cream. Is that a selling point for any of the jobs you're going to be applying for? But there are some transferable skills in there, right? 
So how, how might you rewrite that statement if you were this student? And I know some of you have situations like this, um, jobs that are not relevant, so I want you to think in those terms. But if you were this student, how, how might you re What's another statement that you could put on your resume? Throw one out at me. Increase sales by 25%. Yeah. Increase sales by 25%. They already know you served ice cream because you put creamery on nine. So talk about the sales. Let them know that you were good, that you increased sales. Anything else that you might, any other ideas of a statement? Yeah, increased efficiency by, tw by 50%. Yeah, and that's a really good question. And that's a reason to talk to people who know you and to brainstorm, what is it that I have from that custodian job that stands out? Because I didn't increase sales by 25% on my custodian job. My wife was a custodian going through college and she woke up every morning and had to be to work at 5 a.m. every morning. So what could she say on her resume when she was applying for a teaching job? She was a special ed teacher. That, that might interest them from that job. Yeah, so she has one bullet point on her resume that says that, yeah. Um, so think really hard, what is it? I mean, custodian jobs, there's some good stuff in there because you're a hard worker, you're willing to work to be able to pay for your education, right? So you could even, even you know, just spell that right out. Let them know that you consistently work 20 hours a week doing manual labor for three years. I mean, one bullet point that just says that kind of draws them in and, oh, this is a hard worker. So feel free to brainstorm with me or another counselor in our office or your, you know, friend or family member or someone, you know, and, and just, you know, just brainstorm. What do I have from my custodial job? But yeah, that's exactly why I bring up this is because I know that you have experiences like that. I know that almost everybody in here has some of those. And you don't want to just put clean toilets. You want to add to that just a little bit. Let them know that you consistently, you know, arrived on time at 5 a.m. for two years to clean toilets. So something along those lines. But it's impressive that you... Um, you know, have worked and paid your way through school. So that alone is a nice statement. Okay. Um, <clears throat> make your headings communicate. We talked about that a little bit, each category. Your heading may be different than another. I usually discourage using templates. You could use a template to get started if you want, but sometimes people get frustrated with templates when they try to start moving things around and then it ends up looking really sloppy. And also, sometimes there's a tendency to just stick with their headings when if you created your own, you'd probably come up with a better, more descriptive heading. So make your headings communicate to, to them about what you've got that they're interested in. Accentuate your positives, make it error free, and golden triangle. Um, I'll talk about that in just a minute. Accentuating your positives. Um, anybody applying for a job out of state, do you think, might apply for a job out of state? A lot of you. Um, one problem that uh, students will do sometimes is they'll accentuate that they've only got work experience in Utah. And so you might just kind of tuck that in and not make that in bold, you know, and, and maybe accentuate that you have been out of Utah and had, you know, accentuate that one experience that was outside of Utah. Um, we have had employers say that they're reluctant to hire people who they think are tied to Utah and might not really come or may not last long if they do come. So accentuating um, your positives and then you know you don't have to make those kinds of things really jump out at them if it's not going to be a positive. So um, headers, we won't spend a lot of time on this but you want your name big and bold. Um, make your phone message appropriate. I can tell stories about when when a recruiter was uh, after the career fair a couple of fairs ago was calling um, people to invite them to interview and they got an answering machine that was well first of all the ringtone was music just a 
just music like a lot of people have on their phone and then the answering message was just a little bit goofy it wasn't anything offensive at all but just a little goofy she hung up the phone and didn't invite that girl to a to a, uh, an interview just because she felt like there was a lack of professionalism she didn't want a college student she wanted a professional so think about those things when you're applying for jobs and then also your email address does anybody have the same email address they had five years ago I mean a lot of people keep it after after high school and sometimes it says soccerbabe at gmail.com so you might just create another one if it doesn't look professional first dot last name or whatever and there's different ways to do headers but this is a great way to brand yourself and you can use this same header on top of your cover letter on top of your reference page on top of you know any document that you give to them the rule of the golden triangle is that when they're scanning that document they're going in our culture we scan from top to bottom on the left side of the page they're going right down the left so they're not going to notice this stuff over here in that first look so if you have good stuff make it fit in the golden triangle um, I like to put my dates and locations over here um, because th that's not a, it has to be on the resume but it's not that you know it's not the selling points that you want them to see so ask yourself right now think about your resume am I following this principle are they gonna notice my content is it the top and the left um, this person fluent in Spanish applying for a teaching job and uh, and then had all this I less relevant information and so we worked with this student and watch where the Spanish goes when we when they updated it all of a sudden they reworded it even so Spanish was the first thing that they saw when they're scanning down that left side of the page and then they switched up their experience and put this less relevant work history down here at the bottom and they're more relevant stuff up top and then bulletproofing your resume we've talked about a lot of this stuff as well focus on your results don't just describe the job focus on your results and the impact that you had with that company avoid unsupported claims don't just put I'm honest and full of integrity instead um, have bullet points that show that you're honest that you were you know that, that you were responsible for closing the till at the end of the day and handling large amounts of money or something have evidence that supports what you're saying and then the last thing you should one of the last things you should do after you've got your resume looking really good is go back and read through each of those work experiences and ask yourself can they see a pattern of success um, and then if, if if you're not showing success in one of those work experiences then we're gonna need to brainstorm again what do I have that that shows that I was successful as a custodian I can talk to you more about that we talked about action verbs placing most impressive items first and using transferable skills so the um, the fairs coming up and we're gonna do uh, resume critiques prior to the fair but you can always call our number to make an appointment to come in and get your resume critiqued um, sorry that I don't have time for questions but I am available to help out so good luck putting your resume together I hope that was helpful to you, Thank you. Do that.